good afternoon, everyone. So today we have a uh, Dr. Ben from University of Missouri, Columbia. So Dr. Ben graduated from uh, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign in 2012. So then he did a postdoc at Princeton for three years. So I think he started at Missouri in 2000. 16, so as an assistant professor, so he started his group there, I mean, studying these topological materials. So I will leave the time to him, so today his topic will be topological semi-metal and topological superconductors. Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, I'm Guangbian from Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Missouri, Columbia. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I enjoyed my visit very much. I think I come at a very good time because the Nobel Prize was announced uh, last week and one of my colleagues at uh, MU, uh, Professor uh, George Smith, was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry this year. And it's a huge event for MU and it's really exciting and uh, inspiring to witness such an event in one's life. So uh, today uh, I'll talk about our recent works on topological semi-metals and topological superconductors. Does it work? Okay. And here is the outline. First, I'll introduce the concepts of topological phases of a condensed matter, and then I'll talk about the experimental method, the angle result photoemission spectroscopy, also known as ARPAS. Then I'll talk about two topics. One is topological semi-metals, the other is superconducting topological materials. Uh, at the end, I'll give a summary. So in 2016, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to three uh, scientists, David Tullis, Duncan Holden, and Michael Kostelis, for their groundbreaking works on topological phase transitions and the topological phases of matter. So what we'll discuss in this talk is related to the topological topological phases of condensed matter. So to understand the topological phenomena in condensed matter, uh, let's first consider a very uh, important concept in solid state physics, the band theory. So according to quantum mechanics, we know individual atom has these uh, discrete energy levels. For example, this argon atom has a 3p orbital, which is occupied by electron, and a 4s orbital, which is empty. If we put those atoms in a, in a crystal lattice, the atoms uh, can, can be very close to each other so that the electron can jump between adjacent atoms. So the electron can be described by a block of waves with a certain uh, dispersion relation of energy and the momentum. So to determine uh, the motion of electron in the crystal, we, we need to solve this short equation with the periodic crystal potential. So the result looks like this. So basically, the band dispersion, the dis energy dispersion of free electron is modulated by this uh, periodic crystal potential. Uh, it's, uh, it gets get out at a, a certain high sy symmetry points. Because the periodicity of the crystal lattice, we can fold those band structure uh, back to the first spring <coughs> zone. So we can see a band uh, energy band like this. So if the energy band is occupied by electrons, we call it a valence band. If the uh, uh, energy band is empty, so we call it a conduction band. According to the band structure, we can put the materials into different uh, categories. So if the conduction band and the valence band uh, is, are separated by, uh, by an energy gap, so then we have an insulator or semiconductor. The difference between the two is the size of the band gap. So for insulators, the band gap is uh, several electron volts. Uh, on the other hand, if the conduction band and the valence band overlap with each other, so we have finite density of states at the Fermi level. So in this case, we know this material can con conduct electric current. So we have a metal in this case. And uh, there is a phase in between in which the conduction band and the valence band just uh, barely touch each other. So we have a vanishingly small uh, density of state at the Fermi level. So this material is not as conducting as the metal, so we call it a semi-metal. 
So in this uh, colloquium, we'll talk about the topological semi-metal. So basically, it has a bulk band structure like this, but uh, it has a non-trivial band topology. So we'll see in the following sl slide. The topology in mathematics actually is a global property of geoma uh, geometric objects that uh, are preserved under the continuous deformation. For example, the number of holes uh, on the uh, two-dimensional closed surface. We call this uh, number as a g genus. So the number of holes cannot be changed by simply st stretching the surface, right? right? <coughs> so this number is a topological invariant of this geometric object. And there is a beautiful theorem which can uh, connect the global property uh, to a local uh, uh, quantity. So if we integrate the Gauss curvature on the closed surface over the entire surface, then we can get the genus number. So in physics, uh, one of the most famous examples is this integer uh, quantum Hall effect. So uh, we can observe the plateaus in the Hall conductivity when we uh, do a quantum Hall measurement. So the uh, Hall conductivity is, uh, is proportional to this integer number. And uh, later on, uh, David Tallis and his colleague found that actually this uh, integer number can be calculated can be can be calculated by integrating a, a, a local quantity defined on the brain zone, the best Berry curvature over the entire brain zone. Then we can get this uh, uh, this uh, integer number, and uh, so we can see the similarity between the two uh, equations. So. This number is, is a topological invariant of this physical system. Uh, so feel free to stop me if you have any questions. Topological insulator uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, in the bulk, it's an insulator, but its band, band, band structure has a non-trivial <coughs> topology. So bismuth selenide is a typical topological insulator. So it has this uh, rhombohedral lattice structure. So we have a bismuth layer and a selenium layer in this uh, quantum layer structure. So uh, under the atomic limit in which the bismuth and uh, selenium atoms are isolated, so the selenium 4p orbital is occupied by electron, while the, f uh, the bismuth 6p orbital is empty, which is above the Fermi level. Uh, in the real material, the spin-optic coupling of this, this compound is, uh, is very strong so that actually the ordering of the two bands get inverted. So we have uh, this band inversion. The bismuth 6p <coughs> band is below the Fermi level, while the selenium 4p band is above the Fermi level. It's empty. So this band inversion effectively creates a non-trivial topology in the global band structure of this compound. It's kind of create a hole on the closed surface. So let's consider uh, let's consider what happens at, uh, at the junction of a uh, topological insulator and a uh, band insulator, uh, or, or simply the vacuum. So on the two sides, we have a uh, different uh, band ordering, right? Uh, suppose there is an electron uh, moving from one side to the other side. So the electron must experience uh, a process like this. This band gap must close first and open up again to restore this normal band ordering, right? So at the interface, we know there should be uh, gapless surface days connecting the two uh, bulk bands. So on, on the boundary, there exists the gapless surface days. And because the, those surface days usually has a linear dispersion, so and resembling uh, a, a Dirac cone, so people call it a surface Dirac cone of a topological insulator. And this is exactly a demonstration of the principle of bulk boundary correspondence. If the bulk is a topological, then on, on its boundary, there exists uh, some uh, surface signature. On the other hand, so if we can detect the surface uh, um, signature, the gapless surface states, we will know that uh, its band topology is non-trivial. So this is the principle of a bulk boundary correspondence. So let's get back to the quantum Hall effect. 
So in, in a quantum Hall insulator, uh, we have electrons moving in those uh, cyclotron orbits. So the electrons are trapped. So in the bulk, it's an insulator. It cannot conduct a longitudinal current. Well, on the boundary, we, we have electrons moving in those escaping orbit. So uh, on the edge, it can conduct uh, a transverse uh, Hall current. So those uh, escaping orbit are exactly the topological surface states of this uh, uh, topological system. And we have, uh, uh, here is the band structure of a bismuth selenide, uh, the topological insulator. So, uh, so this is a DFT result. So we can see the conduction band above the Fermi level, the blue area, and the, the valence band below the Fermi level. There is a gap between them. And inside the band gap, so we can see a linear band dispersion connecting the, connection, uh, connecting the conduction and the valence band. So this is the topological surface states. And if we take a, take a cut uh, at a certain energy, so we will see a Fermi surface like this. So it has a circular shape. And the electron on this surface band is spin polarized. So uh, this, uh, and we have an odd number of uh, Fermi surface uh, in this compound from the surface states. And this even odd number of surface states is a topological distinction. So this topological surface states is uh, are simply the signature of the band, bulk band topology. And the electron in this surface band also carries a non-zero barrier phase, and its momentum, uh, its spin orientation is locked to its momentum. So why topological insulator is interesting? It is just because of this bulk insulating and surface conducting uh, property. Uh, using those exotic uh, surface states, people propose to realize uh, uh, some of uh, very exotic states, like the magnetic monopole fractional charge and the marginal fermions. And we will talk about the marginal fermions uh, in the following slides. A question. Yes. So is it topological number that you evidently told us is uh, you're referring to? Is it just the winding number of the, of the spin field around the uh, yes, so, so the winding number, uh, yeah, yeah the, the, this, this non-zero winding number actually reflects the, the, the bulk band topology. So the, the exact definition of a band topology uh, it's, it's, uh, depends on the, the chain number which, it, which is defined over the entire brain zone. So if we integrate the barrier curvature over the entire brain zone, so we get the chain number. And if the chain number is zero, then, then we will know the bulk band is topological. Well, this, this winding number is defined for surface states. Uh, we, we can still see it's, uh, uh, it's non-zero, so it also reflects uh, reflect the, 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 the non-trivial non topology. Oh, yes. just stick with you. Can you get to this topology always by just knowing some function that gives it the uh, convective field? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yes, so the, so we can, uh, we, we can define, actually, the barrier curvature. Yeah, but that's, that's a language. I'm talking about something geometrical. Right. So there's a winding number that's purely geometrical. Yes. The Poincaré index index is the singularity for the vector field. Right. Are, are those keys or equivalent descriptions? Yes. Of the one topology you're talking about? Yes. So in, in the topological insulator, the, the surface state is the is is the, the uh, fingerprint. So, so in order to probe those surface states in topological insulator, uh, we use a, a technique called angle result photo emission spectroscopy. It uh, so far it, it is the most powerful technique to directly uh, visualizing the band structure of a material. So this technique is based on photoelectric effect. So uh, th uh, this is a photon in, electron out. Uh, process. So we shed uh, a UV light on the sample surface, and the electron get kicked out from the sample. And uh, those photoelectrons are collected by this two-dimensional uh, uh, analyzer. So the, the analyzer can tell us the momentum and the kinetic energy of those photoelectrons. 
and from those uh, kinetic information, we can deduce the band dispersion of electron inside the sample. And that's the principle of angle result photo emission spectroscopy. And let's see how it works. So the photoelectrons enter the analyzer through this one-dimensional entrance slate. So we can collect the electron with, with different uh, emission angle. And the, the electron will just uh, pass this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, two-dimensional sphere and land on a uh, two-dimensional detector. So the location it lands on the detector depends on its kinetic energy. So this way, we can map out the band dispersion, EK relation, along, uh, uh, along this direction. So basically, we can directly uh, map out the band structure along this uh, solid line. So in the chamber, we can rotate the sample. So basically, uh, we can measure this uh, band dispersion at uh, different uh, sample orientations. So this way, uh, if we uh, rotate the sample when we measure the sample. So we, we effectively just uh, scan through this two-dimensional uh, Brillouin zone. And here is a, an example. So this is the upper uh, spec, uh, spectrum taken at a different uh, sample orientation. So, so in, each, uh, in each cut, we can, we can easily read out the band dispersion of a gold uh, surface at, at that angle, and then uh, we can st uh, stitch them together to reconstruct the Fermi surface. <coughs> and uh, when we uh, stitch uh, all the cuts together, then we have this uh, ring-shaped Fermi surface of the gold. So this is how we uh, uh, get the band structure of a material using uh, RPAS. So, so is this on the gold? Uh Uh, this is uh, uh, this is on the uh, bulk gold. Oh, bulk gold. How do you know this is gold? What do you mean? It's, it's a, a surface that typically, uh, typically when you have bulk gold, it's a typically Fermi surface. You know how to unbind. Yeah, so the, yeah. That, that's a very good question. So in 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 the bulk gold, we have both bulk states and the surface states. The upper is a uh, is a surface sensitive uh, uh, probe. So actually, there is a way to to uh, to tell which is the surface state and which is the bulk state. So usually, the surface state is uh, is brighter in the photo emission spectrum, and also the surface state doesn't depend on the incident incident photon energy, while the bulk state are sensitive to the uh, photon energy. So th so we can use this um, uh, sensitivity to distinguish the the bulk and the surface states. But here. I just show the surface uh, spectrum. So there are some dim, very dimmer uh, feature, so which are from the bulk. But the, the in more principle, uh, um, my question is not technical. Part. So in principle, so how do you define the surface state of the bulk material? So that's my question. So it, <coughs> what do you mean? Uh, the yeah. Fermi surface. Oh, what is the surface? The, uh, the surface states, uh, so the electron, uh, for surface states, the electron are simply confined within the uh, a few couple layers just uh, under the surface. So, so why do we, sorry, I don't understand this question. I don't understand why the electron only confined in the surface. Yeah. There's no barrier between the surface. Oh, usually, those surface states is trapped in the bulk band gap. There is no bulk states. In, in the bulk band gap. So the surface states simply appear inside the bulk band gap. So effectively, those electrons are confined by the bulk band gap. So the bulk band gap can be regarded as a, a barrier so to confine the electrons. The, the, this is a very important question because we do need distinguished surface states in upper spectrum, so in order to detect the topological order of a topological material. Uh, we can talk more. Uh, uh, yeah. And here uh, is our experimental setup. So we designed and built up <coughs> this uh, experimental facility. So in, uh, in this uh, vacuum chamber, so we have this uh, two-dimensional analyzer, and we use a helium lamp as our UV light source. So the vacuum inside the chamber is uh, um, uh, 10 to the minus 10 tor. 
And uh, we also include a MBE, molecular beam epitaxy evaporator, and also a scanning turning microscope in this, uh, in this uh, system. So in principle, we can grow various two-dimensional materials using MBE and probe its electronic structure using RPAS and the surface morphology using STM. So this is a combined experimental platform. So in a molecular beam epitaxy experiment, the materials are get evaporated uh, in the high vacuum condition and the vapor deposit on certain uh, substrate. So in the experiment, we can precisely control the flux rate of the vapor and the, the flux ratio of different um, elements and also the substrate condition. So this way we can grow very uniform uh, thin films and heterostructures with thickness down to a couple of atomic layers. And here are uh, a few results. Uh, we, 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 we just finished the installation of this system uh, this summer. So we, we collect some preliminary result from this system. So we, we on, the, on the top, we grow 15 atomic layer of bismuth film on silicon surface. So we can see the uh, terrace structure of this film. So the terrace actually arise from the uh, Arrive, uh, arise from the, the, the depends on the substrate uh, flatness because the silicon surface also sh uh, shows up this uh, terrace structure. So, but the film is, uh, is very uniform with, with, uh, with uh, uniform thickness. And on, on, on the terrace, if we zoom in, we can clearly resolve the atomic structure. So each br uh, bright spot uh, corresponds to a, a bismuth atom. And we, we can also map out the band structure, electronic band structure using RPAS. And here is the spectral cast taken at a different uh, sample orientation. And uh, if we put them together, so we can reconstruct the Fermi surface of this sample. So the Fermi surface has uh, this uh, very interesting shape. And uh, we, we recently we grow uh, the monolayer uh, 1T prime tungsten dietalerite. This compound in this uh, particular structure has been predicted to be a two-dimensional topological insulator. And its band gap is uh, about 35 milli EV. So it's large compared to other 2D topological insulators. So uh, here is the result. This is the STM image. So on, on in this image, we can see some, uh, a lot of uh, defects. Those bright spots, uh, we believe, are uh, tungsten clusters on, the, on, on, the, on this thin film. So uh, that explains the, 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 the alpha spectrum is, uh, is fuzzy. So it is because of the defects. However, if we zoom in uh, on the flat area, so we can resolve clearly the atomic structure of this thin film. And uh, we can easily tell this is the 1T prime structure. So this way, we can grow a monolayer 2D topological insulator by this combined method. OK, now let's uh, talk about the topological semi-metallic phases. So in last decade, people uh, found many topological insulators, different types of topological insulators. And uh, they are all defined with a bulk band gap. And uh, the, the, the bands are inverted. So there is a non-trivial band inversion with a topological number. And inside the bulk band gap, there exist gapless surfaces, the topological Dirac cone. And we have those different type of topological insulators. And here is a review article. Very recently, people realized that uh, the same metal, uh, remember we gave the definition at the beginning. So in some metal, there is no band gap. Uh, however, we, we still can define a topological invariant with, uh, in the bulk band structure of a sand metal. And the people, found f uh, people have found uh, different types of uh, topological sand metal, including the Dirac sand metal, well sand metal, and the Nordland sand metal. In Dirac and the well sand metals, the conduction and the valence band touch at those dis discrete points in the brilliant zone. Well, in Nordland sand metal, the conduction and the va valence band touch uh, uh, on this uh, one-dimensional loop. So that's the bulk Fermi surface. 
in those topological same metals. And because the non-trivial bulk band topology on the surface, there exists some topological feature. So in Dirac and well some metals, there exists the, the so-called Fermi arc surface space. Well, in Nordland's uh, same metals, we have the so-called drum head surface space. We'll explain that later. And here is another a cartoon picture showing the topological semi-metallic phases. So we have the direct sun metal, the uh, and two type of uh, two types of uh, well sun metal type one, with which is simply a three D analog of graphene. So so we have this three dimensional linear Dirac cone. In type two well sun metal, this Dirac cone is is uh, tilted in such a way that uh, the Lorentz invariance is broken in this system. And on the surface, we can we can find the topological surface space, which just uh, uh, emanating from the uh, bulk band node. And we we can also have a double well. So in this case, the conduction uh, band and the valence band touch uh, in a quadratic way. So the uh, the the topological number is doubled compared to the the conventional uh, uh, well sum metal. So on the surface, we have two Fermi arcs. Uh, from from the uh, bulk uh, bulk node, and uh, in the Nordland sun metal, the intersection between the conduction and the valence band is a closed loop. So here is the uh, this uh, red curve is the bulk Fermi surface. Uh, so and uh, inside, it's inside this uh, loop there exists the drum head surface space, represented by the by this uh, green uh, green color area, and there 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 is also just the so-called new fermion high degenerate fermion. So in this case, four energy bands degenerate at a single point in the, in the brilliant zone. So it carries a higher uh, topological number. So there are four Fermi arcs uh, emanating from this point. Uh, now uh, let's first uh, uh, consider this uh, well fermion and the well sub metal. So uh, Herman Well discovered that if the mass term in the Dirac equation uh, disappears, then this uh, Dirac fermion can decompose into two copy of uh, two, uh, two component fermion. And, and this two component massless fermion is uh, called well fermion. And uh, each uh, copy of well fermion carries a non-zero topological number, which is called the carrier charge. So the carrier charge can be simply calculated by integrating the barrier curvature over a sphere enclosing that well point. Uh, there is a general theorem telling us that uh, the, the net carrier charge of a, uh, of, a, of a system must be zero. So the, the well fermion must always come in pairs. So the, the well node in, in the bulk band structure can be considered as the monopole of barrier curvature in the momentum space. So uh, th this uh, may be very abstract. So what we can observe in the real material, so basically if we do opposite experiment, so if we map out the band structure, its band structure, we can see a three dimensional linear uh, Dirac cone in the brilliant zone. So that's a uh, well node. And on the Fermi surface, so we can simply have uh, two points of, uh, in the, uh, on the Fermi surface uh, from the bulk band. And because this system carries the non-trivial uh, topological number, so there exists the topological surface space. In this case, the surface band simply connects the two bulk well nodes on the Fermi surface. And because this uh, surface band uh, is an open uh, curve, so people call it Fermi arc space. So the well sun metals uh, provide a, a, re a realization of well fermions in condensed matter system, and it extends the classification of topological phases of matter beyond the insulators. Previously, people only considered the topological phases in insulators. And also, it hosts the exotic Fermi arc surfaces uh, on the surface. So, and this Fermi arc is an uh, open curve. So if we can if we consider the transport of electrons, so the electron can move along this Fermi arc on the surface and, uh, and, uh, and merge into this bulk node. And uh, there is nowhere 
uh, for it to go on this surface, so it uh, simply jump to the opposite surface through this Vulcan, Vulcan node and, uh, and propagate along the other uh, Fermi arc on the opposite surface and uh, jump back. So we have a non-local loop of uh, electron uh, uh, trajectory. So this gives rise many exotic transport signature properties in well some metals. And it also provides a realization of the Carroll anomaly in condensed matter system. So this drawing in the horizontal plane at plane one, that's in the safe space. Yeah, this the is in is it in the real space. It's a little bit weird, you're right. So are you saying the electron is uh, jumping from top? From one surface to the other surface, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Through the, the, through the bulk well formula. So because we have a bulk, bulk state here and here, they, they belong to the same well, well node. So the, the electron can simply just, uh, just jump from this surface to the other surface. And also this is a demonstration of a bulk boundary correspondence because the non-trivial bulk band topology. And uh, while I was uh, in Princeton, so my colleagues did uh, an experiment yeah, on this compound, tantalum arsenide. So this compound has been predicted to be a well sun metal. So it has this crystal structure. And uh, in the bulk band structure, there are multiple well nodes in the brain zone. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, this is the uh, zero zero 001 surface of this compound. And uh, we can see those uh, curves, open curves, connecting the well nodes. So those are Fermi arcs. So in, in an uh, ARPAS experiment, so we want to detect uh, those features. But in the experiment, in, in, in theory, so if you look at the electron doing this kind of strange thing, mm -hmm. what do we know that? Is that all electron is non distinguishable? Right. So could it be just some other electron? So if we get a very two electrons doing a separate thing, right? How do we know that? Um, uh, that's uh, that's a good question. So here, uh, so we we do need to have a very good single crystal of uh, of uh, well sun metal. So y in a single crystal of well sun metal, so the only electron on the Fermi surface are from the well node. So if we can see the node in the upper spectrum on the Fermi surface, then we will know those are from the well, for well, well, well Fermi state. So th this is the only available electronic state on the Fermi surface. And here is the result and uh, compared with the DFT result, you can, we can see those uh, nodes. So those are well nodes from the bulk states and uh, the open curves connecting those uh, nodes. So those are the Fermi arc surface states. And we also uh, measure the dispersion uh, along uh, each momentum direc uh, direction. So we can find the, the linear uh, dispersion and also a double copy of well formula in this compound. So this way we, we prove in experiment that this compound is a well sun metal. Why does it have to get cut off? Uh, which this is this one, yeah. So this is basically the sample. So <coughs> we, we cannot perfectly align the sample with respect to the analyzer. So we can only detect this this much no, uh, area. No, that's not what you can detect. This, this thing here is a total shot. Why has it been cut off? What uh, happens outside the boundary of this thing? This one, this part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we simply we, we cannot see that in our because because the. From zero to one, it don't have minus one. Yeah, we have. We definitely we have minus one. But uh, according to the symmetry of the crystal, we can easily just uh, extrapolate the band structure to the to the to the negative direction. It, 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 looks, it looks like from that it wasn't so good on outside this. That's all I want to get. <laughs> yeah. It looks like it's a good total shot. You just took a little. Took a little time. Time. Yeah, so the, yeah, the, pr the brain zone is periodic. So we, if we can, we, if, if we can see the... Right, right. So the brain zone is periodic. Yeah, so if we can see the... 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 If we can see the
So as long as we can see uh, the, the band structure in this quadrant of the brain zone, then that's fine because we, we can easily get the other states by so considering the symmetry. Uh, the brain zone yeah. Yeah. So that's we only need to do for one. We don't need all stuff. Okay, why yeah. do minus one to one? Is it possible? That's the periodic. You can just cut and copy. Right. Or flip it. Yeah. Uh, we can just flip it to to, to get uh, the, the states. Yeah. So then let's move on to another uh, topological semi metallic Making the issue of these short pictures. Yeah. Of these nodal parts. Right. Okay. All right. So what are the issues of these nodal parts? So I gather, if I can try to follow you, that uh, since you have, have these squiggly surfaces mm -hmm. inside the bulb, uh, there's topological necessity yeah. for uh, some structure to appear on the surface. Yes. And structure has to connect some of the interior stuff in that periodic. Right. So if it's absolutely ne necessary topologically, it could not possibly have gone wrong. Uh, yeah, so uh, we get the conclusion actually from, uh, uh, actually from this con uh, good consistency between the experiment and the DFT simulation. So you, you, you can easily see a good uh, agreement between the experiment and the theory. So from the theory, I can, we, can, uh, we can calculate the topological number of the band structure easily. So, and uh, from that, we can, we, can, we can tell the topological nature of this compound. OK, so uh, let's move on to the other topological semi-metallic phase, which is not line uh, same metal. So in this case, the conduction band, this blue, uh, blue band, uh, overlap with the valence band, this uh, red band. And the intersection is only a one-dimensional loop. And uh, we call it a nodal line. And if we integrate the barrier curvature over a, a little loop, which interlinks this nodal line, we can get the winding number. And uh, uh, in, this uh, in, in this particular case, the winding number is, uh, is non-zero. It equals uh, uh, plus or minus pi. And uh, because this, this winding number is a global property, and it's a topological number. So, uh, so from this, we can, we, we can, we can see uh, the topology of this uh, band structure. And from the principle of bulk boundary correspondence, we know there exist topological surfaces. In this case, the surface band simply connect to every point on this nodal line. So we have a two-dimensional sphere filling inside this nodal line. So with the particle symmetry, so this surface band is a perfectly flat, so which resembles a drum head surface. So, and this is the top view. So this is the bulk Fermi surface, the, the red circle, and the blue area is the surface band. So um, because it resembles a drum head surface, so people call it drum head surface state. Well, in, in general cases, so without particle symmetry, this band can be dispersive, uh, and also it can uh, stay inside and outside the, uh, this nodal ring. And so the, the Fermi surface uh, would look like uh, this, so two, uh, two, two, uh, two loops. And we, we did a DFT simulation uh, for this compound, a light tantalum selenide, and we uh, and uh, and this is the the image of the crystal and the STM image, and uh, interestingly, this compound is also superconducting. So the transition temperature is 3.8 Kelvin, and here is the DFT result. So we can see the tantalum band and uh, light uh, tantalum band and the light band just cross each other and forming two nodal lines around this uh, corner point of the uh, H point uh, of the brain zone. So in this case, the nodal line is protected by a mirror symmetry. And uh, here is our photo emission result. So we can resolve the, the tantalum uh, bulk band and the light uh, uh, bulk band. So they cross each other and forming a ring-shaped uh, Fermi surface at this corner of the brain zone. So uh, this is the, the bulk nodal line. And we can also observe some surface states which just uh, uh, which connects to the bulk nodal line. So this is the, the drum head surface state of this compo compound. And again, we have a, 
good uh, agreement between the experiment and uh, the DFT simulation. So that's the common practice in, in ARPAS community. So, so if we can reach a good agreement between DFT theory and um, the ARPAS uh, results, so we can, we can, we can uh, tell actually the bulk band topology in a real compound. So this way we, we, we prove that this compound is a topological not a line side metal. Yeah, this one, yeah, this and this are, are from a simulation. Yeah, so for that band, so how do you treat the, how do you treat the both, both the, the inference from both? So the, the red bands actually here are, are from bulk, while the surface band is colored in yellow. So what, what, so again, so I go back to my original question. Mm -hmm. Right. Or I have surface. So how do you how do, how do you de define this is a surface band? How, what what is a surface Hamiltonian? Mm. How do you how do you define a surface Hamiltonian? The electron only trapped inside the surface without going into the bulk. Yeah, we, we can always just uh, uh, build up a Hamiltonian for the bulk material, right? And uh, fr and uh, then if we yeah. if we cut in the material. To a, to a open surface, then we solve the Sheldon equation. So suppose there is, there is a bulk band gap. So in some cases, so there will be a, some extra band inside of the bulk band gap. So those states cannot be bulk states. So and if we just uh, plot out the wave function, we'll see but those, those states are confined, are uh, trapped in, in, the in the surface. Mm -hmm. the, the electron in the crystal, mm -hmm. in the crystal, in yeah. the bulk. Yeah. What do you mean in the surface? Just uh, um, so the, the surface so electrons. Define uh, the gradient, the, the plot of it, so yeah, the uh, surface, how do you define yeah, it? In theory, so we can plot out the wave function of those states. So we can see those, the wave function is confined, actually, near the surface. So uh, there is no such thing as confined in the surface. Just near, near, uh, near, uh, uh, I understand. So it's not a perfectly two-dimensional thing. It, it, it just uh, stay within a couple of layers beneath the, beneath the surface. Why is there no barrier between surface and the bulk? Because there is a, the the surface? Because those states are just are trapped by the bulk band gap. So we, we can, uh, yeah, we can discuss that later, so okay. yeah. And, uh, uh, no, we, 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 we calculate another compound, selenium tantalum selenite, so with a similar uh, crystal structure. And in this compound, uh, our calculation shows uh, a single nodal line below the Fermi level, and the surface state actually uh, shows up a very interesting feature. So it undergoes a leaf phase transition if we lower the bending energy. So, so uh, we are, uh, it's an on ongoing uh, research work. So we are we are uh, growing such sample and do the RPAS result. But uh, so far we we have not uh, just uh, get a good RPAS result from the from the real sample. Okay, so here is the second topic of my, uh, my, my of this colloquium. So it's uh, about the superconducting topological materials. So the motivation comes from uh, marginal fermions. So the marginal fermions is a very interesting particle that uh, in the sense that it is its own anti-particle. So the, uh, if the gamma is the, is the creation operator, so it equals its uh, complex conjugate. So, uh, and uh, this idea was first proposed by uh, the Italian physicist uh, Marjona. So, uh, so wh what's interesting in marginal fermions, so if we exchange two identical marginal fermions, then we cannot get back to the same state. It shows a non-abelian statistics, and uh, this operation uh, of uh, ex exchanging particles is called a uh, breeding. And because of this particular uh, breeding property, people propose that uh, the marginal fermions can be utilized to realize topological quantum computation. It has some advantages over the conventional quantum computation. So, uh, However, so far, 
the marginal fermions uh, have not uh, been observed in high energy physics experiments. So then the question is, is it possible to realize the marginal fermion in the lab? And the, quest, uh, the answer is yes. So uh, Kitayev uh, proposed this idea that the marginal fermions can exist in topological uh, superconductors. So here is the 1D uh, model for, uh, for superconductor. So here the T is the simply the hopping parameter between just uh, the states in adjacent uh, atoms. And the U is uh, the chemical potential. And the delta here is the uh, uh, superconducting pairing uh, uh, constant. So th th this, this term gives give rise to the Cooper pairs. So uh, uh, we know uh, by counting the degree of freedom, two marginal fermions equals one just normal fermion. So the, this uh, uh, fermion operator can be uh, written in terms of a sum of two marginal, uh, marginal operators. So we can rewrite this Hamiltonian in terms of uh, uh, marginal operators. So we get this Hamiltonian. So in, in the case that uh, T1 is smaller T2, uh, we have a, a so-called topological superconductor. So we have a one-dimensional marginal chain, and uh, as, as schematically shown here. So at the end of this uh, 1D topological superconductor, there exists unpaired marginal fermion at the end. So the marginal fermions can be simply considered as the topological boundary state of a topological superconductor. So this is another demonstration of the principle of a bulk boundary correspondence. And uh, in 2D uh, topological superconductor, the marginal fermions can exist at the core of a magnetic flux. This idea was proposed by uh, Liang Fu and Charlie Kane in 2008. So, and uh, this cartoon picture shows the idea. So, so we have this uh, topological uh, superconductor, and this, uh, and there is a single magnetic flux. So the marginal marginal fermion just uh, stay at the core of this flux. And, uh, and this marginal state has exactly zero energy. So people uh, often call this state as marginal zero mode. And now the question becomes how to realize a two-dimensional topological superconductor. So one of, uh, one of the feasible uh, method is to introduce Cooper pair into the topological surface states we just talked about. So then we need to look for materials with both topological surface states and bulk superconductivity. So that's the idea. So that's why we need to search for superconducting topological materials. And uh, again, so we, 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 we examine this, this compound, light tantalum selenide, and we know it's a superconductor with TC 3.8 Kelvin. And we also, uh, in our um, experiment, we can see uh, the topological Dirac cone at the center of the brilliant zone. So this compound is not only a topological node line semi-metal, but also a topological insulator. So in the sense that it has this topological surface states, and through the bulk boundary proximity, so the bulk is superconducting, right? There, there are cool pairs. So, so this bulk conductivity actually can introduce the pairing uh, effect uh, into the topological surface states of this compound. So, and this Cooper pairing of topological electrons actually give rise to the surface topological superconductor. And uh, so this, this material can potentially host marginal fermions. And following our uh, prediction, a group in Taiwan did a, a, a STM measurement on this compound. And this is a tunneling spectra. Uh, spectra. So this, uh, th the spectra shows the uh, superconducting coherence peak and uh, the superconducting gap in this compound. So this, this, this compound is a superconductor. Then they turn on the magnetic field. So they, they, they observe the magnetic, uh, magnetic uh, vertex. So the, the, bright, uh, uh, the bright dot is a, a ma magnetic vertex. Then they do a tunneling uh, spectroscopy at the core of the magnetic flux, uh, at the magnetic flux. Uh, at the magnetic uh, vortex, so so they observed zero energy peak in the turning spectroscopy. So 
So, so this result strongly suggests the marginal fermions exist in this, in this compound, but we need more experimental evidence for, for this uh, idea. And we, we, we did calculations for a couple of uh, other superconductors. So this uh, light, uh, uh, this magnesium light, so in the, this is its bulk band structure. So, and we simulate its surface and we find the topological surfaces uh, uh, in the bulk band gap, but the surface is uh, about the Fermi level. So it is about 0.6 EV above the Fermi level. So we uh, in real material, we can shift the ma ma uh, Fermi level upward by doping the system with electron. And, uh, and also fortunately, actually uh, by doping the electron, we can make this compound super, condu uh, super conducting. So this is our electrophonon simulation. And we can see, so if we dope the uh, electron, if we dope electron to this system and shift the Fermi level to, 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 to this place, so the transition temperature can be as high as 1.5 Kelvin. So, so in this compound, we can make it super conducting and topological at the same time. So it can be a candidate for hosting marginal Fermi. And the other compound is this molecular carbide. So there are two possible uh, structure. One is the uh, alpha phase in the sodium uh, chloride uh, structure, and the other is the gamma phase in this uh, hexagonal structure. Both of them are topological in their <coughs> bulk band structure. So the alpha phase is a topological insulator with the topological surfaces. The other is a topological nodoline sand metal. And the alpha phase has been known to be a superconductor with a TC around uh, uh, 14 Kelvin, 14 K. And uh, our calculation uh, agrees well with the, with, the, with the experimental fact. And uh, so this, uh, the alpha phase uh, hosts the superconductivity and the topological surface states at the same time. And the other phase is not superconducting. But our electron phonon simulation uh, uh, indicates that if we dope this system with a hose, so if we move down, move the Fermi level downwards, then we can make it superconducting. So the, the TC can also uh, be as high as about nine Kelvin. So, so in, th in the other phase of a moly, uh, moly carbide, the, in the gamma phase, we can also make it superconducting and uh, topological at the same time. So this can be another good candidate for hosting topological superconductivity and the marginal fermions. So, so here is the summary. So uh, the goal of our research work is to discover just the novel topological phases of condensed matter. With those exotic uh, surface states and uh, bulk states, we can study fun, uh, new fundamental physics like well fermions, marginal fermions, chiral anomalies, and even supersymmetry uh, in a condensed matter system. So that's the, that's the goal of this whole research uh, uh, field. And uh, at the end, I would like to like thank our uh, sponsors, uh, National Science Foundation and the University of Missouri, and uh, our group members, and all our collaborators. And uh, I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Yeah, so we, uh, that's a very good question. So we simply just uh, did, uh, uh, just, uh, we, we brought through the, the, the catalog of, uh, all su uh, of uh, superconductors. And uh, we are looking for the superconductors with a narrow band gap. So, and also, uh, if the compound has uh, very high weight elements, we will know that uh, this compound has very strong spin optic coupling. So potentially, this can host some non-trivial band topologies. So, so if we find a good candidate, then we will do a systematic DFT simulation for that to, to identify this topological signature. Yeah. When you, when you the, the, the bulk surface, how do you treat the dangling uh, In DFT, we, 
we simply, so our input are just the crystal structure. So the, the, the modern DFT software can automatically generate the, the, the band structure. We, we, we do. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, uh, that's a good question. So uh, usually, the the atoms on the surface just uh, relax. So uh, there might be some surface reconstruction. So the crystal structure on the surface is different from the bulk. So in DFT, we can we can do the Monte Carlo simulation to relax the relax the atom. Now, how, how do you know which one is the crack? You don't you don't have uh, you don't you don't know what. The Mm. You can look at the lowest energy one. Yeah, we just uh, relax. Yeah, we let the atoms on the surface to um, to just uh, to relax to get the minimum energy of the, the system. So that that corresponds to the stable structure. And uh, actually, we can compare the surface atomic structure with with STM result. So if they are consistent, then we would say, uh, yeah, DFT is okay. So because of it, in STM, we can visualize the surface atomic structure easily. So actually, I have a question. So I mean, I know a lot of people working on this Y sim 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 semi metal, right. right? So what is the? I mean, I know it's a new basis, right? Mm. But what is the motivation? Like, is there some special properties that like you really can't find in other? Yeah, at the beginning, I actually people simply compete to realize a well fermion in a solid state system because the well fermion is a high energy physics concept, right? But uh, so far, no. Uh, so please correct me if I'm wrong. So, uh, so the well fermion uh, was not uh, has not been observed in high energy physics. So it's just a, a, a concept, but. Uh, then people start to think about, so is it possible to realize that to make some uh, just the electronic state state behave like a well fermion? So then people just uh, perform some band structure simulation, and uh, it is possible to have this three-dimensional linear dispersion of electron, so which make the electron behave like a well fermion. So then that's the original idea. And uh, later on, people found that uh, those well, well, well electrons can 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 demonstrate some very interesting property like a chiral anomaly, this non-local transport property. So, and and the research simply going along this direction like this. So, any other question? So, if not, so let's thank the speaker. Thank you.